<laughs> uh, welcome, Ibra. So, oh, thank you for Ibra. inviting me. <laughs> of course, I have to invite you. I'm very excited to have you. So, Ibra is my best friend at Bryn Mawr. We were roommates in first year. And today, I'm going to interview her about her experience at Bryn Mawr, but also just like other things, we'll talk about friendships, we'll talk about environments, we'll talk about personal development throughout college. Um, I'm very happy because this is something I've always wanted to do, but we finally are doing this. And it's kind of interesting because we remember like in the first year, we talk about doing like a college YouTube channel. <laughs> No, we, okay, so the thing is, I, I literally remember us talking about doing a podcast together when we were at the gym. We were both walking on the treadmill, and we came up with this idea of, like, um, like creating our, like, roommate podcast, like, talking about, like, friendships, college, yeah. like, healthy habits, whatever, all these things, and mm -hmm. we had four years to do that. We never did. We never did that. And now we're doing this on Zoom, which is so funny. <laughs> yeah. And now we graduated. That's crazy. Yeah, that is crazy. <laughs> yeah. So I have a list of questions that I've prepared to ask you. There's so much that I want to talk to you about, just but it will be more like a conversation. So why don't we start off first, just for you to introduce yourself a little bit about your background, because your background, to me, it's very interesting. Yeah, and then we'll start talking and I'll ask you questions from there. Okay, so uh, my name is Ibrar. And I graduated uh, from Bryn Mawr College. Um, I studied biochemistry and molecular biology. And I am pr I was pre-dental. So that means I took all the credits, all the classes uh, for like to apply to dental school. And I submitted my application the beginning of this summer. And now I'm taking I'm taking a gap here. So I'll have to wait this year to um, hear back from dental schools. And while I'm waiting I do have to work I right now I'm in Boston because I went to high school in Boston but before that I was living in Istanbul because I am Turkish and my parents are from Turkey so I went to elementary school and middle school in Istanbul Turkey and before that so I'm going backwards but I went to kindergarten and first grade in Brooklyn New York and I was actually born in New Jersey so it's it's mm. a lot of Moving you're all over the place all over the place so when people ask me where are you from I actually have so much trouble answering but I think I mean now I say my family lives in Boston mm -hmm. but I personally feel like Bryn Mawr or Philadelphia is like it it feels more like home to me just mm -hmm. because I spent four years on my own um like during like during college um which like a lot of like I don't know I think like I felt like I grew a lot um so it, it does make me feel like I do feel safe like I'm at mm -hmm. home when I'm in uh Philadelphia mm. yeah no I feel the same way I feel like it comes at this point in our life when um we spent so much time there and now like we need to find the next place where we define and call home but it's hard, right? Because right now, like in the beginning of our 20s and adulthood, we will just like move around and we don't really settle in one place. Yeah, I actually it's it's crazy because um my college application essay, like my common app was about how I made my high school my second home. Mm. Because when I was in Turkey, I felt like school was my second home. And mm. when I came here, I felt like that the 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 absence of that feeling made mm. me feel very like you know not like comfortable I wanted to make that space feel like home I think mm. that really I don't know if I, I just use that like saying a lot like like I guess the the concept of mm. home is very important for me like mm have memories where I know people like I know the space I'm comfortable with the space like the rooms the the building mm -hmm. you know like or like even having like a coffee shop like having a like a coffee shop that I can go to and I know they have like the best chai latte I don't know mm -hmm. they're just like very small things that make you feel like you're 
in a safe place. You know what you're doing, you're like comfortable, you know? I think the theme of today's conversation is already established. I want to talk a lot about the definition of home and what that means to you throughout all the conversations. So yeah. you mentioned that you grew up, you were born in the U.S. and then you came back to Turkey and then you came back to the U.S. again from middle school and high school. It must have been really hard. And how did you like being a middle schooler? Because I came to the U.S. studying university. So at least that's a little bit easier for me. But yeah. how was it for you when you have to like try by yourself, make this new school full of American kids your home? Yeah. So it was actually like I came here in high school, um, actually my sophomore year, which I think is harder because mm -hmm. if I came here when I was in middle school, I mm -hmm. had I would have more time to prepare for college and to catch up with all the American students who like grew up here. English is their first language. So they're comfortable with that's like not even a thing that they have to deal with. They can just focus on the, the SATs and whatever, you know, like other stuff. But when I came here, I actually was taking um, like ESL like classes, like English as a second language um, classes. And for like my history class or like more like humanities classes where like my school had these had this thing like sheltered history classes, like where basically um, students who it was English as their first language would take those history classes instead of taking like honors history class or whatever. So my sophomore year, like sophomore year of high school, those are the, those were the classes that I took. But with like sciences, I took like the highest level courses, <laughs> which was funny because I was taking like this math course with all these like juniors and seniors. And they were like, oh, like Ibrar is this like super genius person. But I was like, well, maybe in math, but like in English, like I'm not, you know, it's, I'm really having trouble, like trying to write this essay. Like it was like the hardest thing. Like I just, you know, in Turkey, they don't teach you how to write an essay, like the structure. So I really had like hard time um, in my like humanities classes, but with sciences, I was fine. And then my junior year, I actually started taking like regular English classes. I, I, I didn't come here with no English. I knew, I think my weakest one was like speaking, mm -hmm. uh, but like reading, reading and understanding was probably the best. Writing was also my, my weakest skill, but And then my my junior year, I started taking like AP classes, AP chemistry, AP calculus. And then like my other humanities classes were just like honors or like just, yeah, it was, it was mostly honors. And then senior year, I actually, I mean, I, I took the SATs and mm -hmm. for for math, I did like, I got full, mm -hmm. full score or whatever, like 1800 for an English section. I think I got 610 which is like which was what I was aiming for because for someone who like recently moved to the U.S. Mm. like I just wanted to show them that like to, to colleges that like I know I know how to speak English I know enough to mm. go to college I will improve <laughs> yeah 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 um so things happen and then I ended up getting a scholarship maybe we'll maybe we'll talk about it like yeah I ended up getting this scholarship to go to Bryn Mawr College which I'm, I'm so grateful that like, because it was so <laughs> random, like, I don't know how that even happened. But I feel like th like that happened for a reason, like not yeah. everything happens for a reason, but that definitely happened for a reason. <laughs> for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So can you actually tell me about that scholarship? It's called Posse. You are a Posse scholar. How did you come to know about it? So um, the end of my junior year, I received this email saying that I was nominated for this scholarship. But around that time, like, I actually received so many emails from colleges saying like, you know, that they just want you to like tour their college and then like apply. So I didn't really look in. I think I received that email when I was in class. I thought it was a scam, honestly. <laughs> um, And I didn't really go onto their website and like look at like their, you know, mission or like other other stuff. Um. But then I went to my guidance counselor's office for something else. When I was leaving, she was like, oh, by the way, I nominated you for Posse Scholarship. Did you like receive an email? I was like, oh, yeah, I did. I thought it was a scam, though. She was like, oh, no, like this is what Posse is. Like she explained to me what Posse was. And then that day I was like, I, I like it was I feel like it was so random. Like if she didn't tell me that she nominated me for Posse, I don't think I would have like gone would have known. Yeah. Because mm. basically the the nomination, like you have to 
um, I think, accept the nomination and then go to the first interview. So if I didn't accept it, I would have not, it would just not happen. Basically, Posse Scholarship is a full tuition leadership scholarship, and um, it is a national scholarship. They have five different um, partner schools. They send 10 students to each of the each of these schools. Mm. Um, and so like, and they're like, different um like interviews so like the first interview is a group interview everyone that gets nominated like goes to this interview you're given like different tasks there are people like walking around and like taking notes because each one like we each have like a number so it was Mm. a little bit like stressful because everyone's Mm. trying to show that they're a leader Mm -hmm. if you're like too much of a leader then it's you know good it's not good. Yeah, mm. I, I didn't see those people in the second interview, mm. for example. Mm. <laughs> the ones who were like dominating, they weren't there. <laughs> mm. um, the second interview is one on one. So they ask you about your grades and how you're a leader, blah, 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 like all these things. And they also ask you like what your top choice is. Like, what are your like choices? You know, your first choice, second choice, third choice of school. So my first choice was Bryn Mawr, actually. And my second choice was Bucknell. And they asked me, like, are they, like, close? Like, Bryn Mawr, Bucknell? Or, like, how far are they from each other? And I was, like, Bryn Mawr and then Bucknell. Like, mm. you know, if because they're going to choose the finalists for each school. But you might not get your first choice. Mm. I got my first choice. So I was selected as a finalist for Bryn Mawr College. But some people were... Um, selected for their second choice mm. uh, so I'm glad that I actually said like Bryn Mawr Bucknell you know mm. so then the final interview is with 20 other finalists so they're I mean 19 other finalists because they're 20 finalists and then actually from Bryn Mawr um the admissions like um officers what I don't know I don't know what they're called but they actually come to Boston and they're mm. part of this interview too. So it, it's a it's a group interview again. And then um and it was long. It was maybe like three hours. I don't know. It was it felt so long. It was draining because they actually mm-hmm. <laughs> they talk a lot. And mm-hmm. even though I like talking, it <laughs> was like it was draining. And then that night they actually called me and they were like, oh, like um how are you how what did you think about the interview I was like great like it was it was really fun they were like oh like you know you got um, it a posse like something like that and I was like, <laughs> oh, like that's crazy like I was really happy but the thing is I watched so many videos uh, about posse before um like going to those interviews and stuff mm. I really wanted to get like I, I wanted this scholarship mm. I needed to like know you know what mm. I was getting into um and some of the posse scholars had like YouTube videos and they actually said that they received a call after the final interview saying that they got mm. it so mm-hmm. I was expecting <laughs> I a call because <laughs> I was I, was I work hard for this and then this number called me and I was like mom that they're calling me Re- start recording I I actually have a video of me answering the call because I was like mom I know they're you calling. never told me I never, oh, I never watched told this you. no <laughs> yeah um yeah I I knew that <laughs> I didn't know that they were gonna call me but I knew that if someone if a number called me it was gonna be them and they mm. were gonna tell me that I got in yeah so yeah so um and then after you get in with your mm. posse like with your squad with your little group um every week you have PCT pre-collegiate training um, for two hours, um, like you talk about deep stuff, very personal stuff, um, sometimes uncomfortable because you don't know these people. You're like, you're just getting to know them, but mm-hmm. you are sharing your deepest, like, out of like your personal. very personal stories with them. Um, but you're actually like, I feel like I like learned a lot from those, even though mm-hmm. it was uncomfortable. I feel like you don't learn stuff if you don't get into like, those uncomfortable situations or like Mm. those uncomfortable um conversations so that was like second semester of my senior year and then during the summer so this is like the whole thing during summer for two weeks we went to um Bryn Mawr and we had this like summer program where we like we took some classes um Mm. I mean it wasn't like not for credit or anything but just to like you know see the campus like meet some professors feel of it yeah and then we had a we have a mentor like um 
she is a psychology professor. Mm. Um, the first, yeah. first few years, you have like um, group meetings and um, one-on-one meetings mm-hmm. um, with your mentor. It was great, especially the one-on-ones. I, I mean, now, like it was, it actually felt like, like I would say like therapy because it was like, <laughs> you know, you, you just, especially with like, a psychology mentor, professor like, as well exactly. yeah. yeah like she knows how to listen like it, it was it was really good I mm. think yeah. mm. so I think even the posse group by itself is very diverse so we'll talk more about diversity and you know community later on um but you said that Bryn Mawr was your first choice why and how did you how do you learn about Bryn Mawr and why was it your first choice yeah for the for the first interview, actually, my after the first interview, I looked at all the schools, right? And I was like, oh, I like Bucknell, actually. Mm. And then I did more research, Bucknell and Bryn Mawr, and then I changed my mind. And I was like strongly like, I want to go to Bryn Mawr. I watched this like YouTube video. I, I'm on YouTube like <laughs> most of the time <laughs> when I'm <I'm> free. <laughs> Like this girl, um, Bryn Mawr student, actually, she took a video of like May Day. And I just loved, I just loved it. Like everyone wearing white, like flowers. It looks mm-hmm. so like, and then like little games, like mm-hmm. cute, like very like, like wholesome. It's, it's like, a it, like I liked the, the it's idea. It's a vibe. <laughs> it's a vibe, yeah. <laughs> but like I, like, so <laughs> that's a very specific vibe though. Like, yeah. I, like I wouldn't really describe Bryn Mawr's vibe as like May Day. Like, mm. like it's very diverse. I think like there's so many different vibes, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, that was not, I mean, that wasn't like the only reason why I chose Bryn Mawr. I, I watched a couple more videos. Like I saw the campus, like the, the castle looking, like the buildings looked so nice. The campus looked so nice. Being like a historically women's college I was just like, uh, like, I love that, you know, mm-hmm. like, it's very, like, the idea, even the idea to me is very, like, empowering, like, mm. yeah. So I want to go deeper into just like you growing over the years in Bryn Mawr. Yeah. Um, We were roommates first year, you actually reached out to me first, I still have that same message, screenshot of the message that you when you texted me. Because as roommates, I've seen you in different situations. I know that you went through a lot of restructuring and changes from your first year. Can you tell me what your first year was like? And how did that, you know, restructuring of your life happen for you? Um, first year, Ibrar thought that, like, she didn't have to study. <laughs> because, like, college was just a place to have fun. And just do social stuff all the time. I think, I mean, I'm very extroverted and I'm, I like being around people. I like doing stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't like, I mean, back then I feel like I never felt like I needed to take a day to myself and just like do nothing. Like, Mm -hmm. you know, just, or just spend time by myself. That Mm -hmm. was just not like something that I would do. Like I rushed through like things that were like, I I feel like the most like are the most important things like having breakfast like eating a proper like meal you know like those things I was just like okay it's fine like I'll just eat this cookie and then you know there's like this event that I want to go to I think I didn't know how to prioritize stuff Mm -hmm. um I ended up not feeling that great about it towards the end of first semester well it it wasn't late to fix that but it Mm -hmm. was just like oh like wow like you know, how to fix that now? What do I do? Because I've never been in that kind of like, that kind of situation before. I mean, Mm. um, I'm living on my own, um, like away from my parents. So there's no one telling me like, oh, like you shouldn't eat like cheesecake for dinner. Like you need something nutritious. Like no one's telling me what to do, which I like, but, but I did make the wrong decisions, you know, Mm. like I, I made good decisions too, but I feel like my freshman year, I would say I made a lot of mistakes mm. and, and I learned from them, yeah. um, which, is, which I think is good because I feel like I would never learn these lessons if I didn't do those mistakes. Um, I agree. And to be so. fair, you started out like in a new environment. I think it's hard for us to form habits right from the first semester. Like even for me, we we actually talk about this because in first semester, 
you don't know if you should be studying or you should be out there partying. Like, you know, you don't know if you should make friends with just this one person or just try to hang out with as many people as possible. I mean, I think first year, it's a lot of change, not necessarily in me. Like Mm. I wasn't like a different person. I think I was just being myself like, mm. acting, like, like doing things that I wanted to do, but mm. always doing the things that I wanted to do, you know, mm. sometimes you have to be like, okay, like, this is too much, you have an exam tomorrow, you can't sleep at one. Also, like, you get to know yourself too. Like, mm. I didn't know, for example, that I'm not a night owl. Well, the thing is, I can be a night owl if I want to, for one night, for example, mm. if there's a party, I can go to that but the next morning, I I will kind of feel horrible. Up. Feel yeah, feel feeling like tired. That whole day is like weird. You know, mm. it's just like, ugh, like. But sometimes it's worth it. Sometimes mm. you have to like some. I, I I mean, I'm not saying I'm never gonna go to a party at like well like. Sometimes I am a night owl, but there's a like, not before my exam, like <laughs> not before the midterms week, like that's. Mm. I learned about myself during Mm. my first year because I went to bed late and then the next day I had an exam and I woke Mm. up feeling like very disoriented and like like I couldn't like remember stuff for example Mm. I was tired the whole day Mm. I had energy to do stuff or something else that I learned about myself is like if I don't eat nutritious meals, I just don't have energy to even walk. Like mm. I remember like walking to um, Park Science Building and I would feel so tired. It's not even that far. It's like maybe like a five minute walk. Mm-hmm. But my senior year, I would like walk back and forth during the day, like multiple yeah. times because I would like get lunch, go back, study. Like, you know, it it, it makes a big difference. Like that's mm. what I learned about, again, my body, like how... Like, what should I eat? Like, mm. again, I'm not saying don't eat. Like, I, I'm i not saying I mean, this is to myself. But mm. I'm not saying I'm not eating like any sweets or like, yeah. you know, junk. It's food, like but- finding that point of balance exactly. and whatever works best for your body, whatever makes you feel good. Yeah. Mm. No, that's a really good point. I feel like that's actually some one of the very important things that college teaches us because people just go to college and being thrown in a new environment. It's hard. It's a really good insight that you share just now. Yeah. Also, like I talk to um, like incoming freshmen. I never mm-hmm. like tell them like, don't do this or don't mm-hmm. do that. But I, I tell them like, try not to do this. But even then, I know that they're, they are going to end up doing that. Which is good because I feel like if you just do the right thing because I did the wrong thing and then fix myself and I'm telling you to do the right thing, I feel like it won't, that habit isn't going to stick with them, you Mm. know? And they're not going to be like, oh yeah, like just because Ibra did this, she made this mistake, so I shouldn't do this mistake and I should do this. Like do that for a month, but then they're going to, they're going to like do whatever they feel like doing and Mm. they have to realize that, oh, this is actually not working for me. Right. I have to do it because once you face that consequence yourself, mm. then you're more motivated to fix that. Yeah, you know? I agree. Even simple things like what before coming to college, I thought that, oh, I, I'm going to be a night owl study for hours in the library. But <laughs> <laughs> I we talk about this, too. I went to the library maybe once or twice and then I would end up spending my whole years like two last two years just studying in my room even though so many people who went to college in the U.S. um, or just went to college in general tell you that so this is what you're going to expect in college you're going to expect to party a lot you're going to expect to you know spend a lot of hours in the library that might not be the case for you because each person has a different experience right yeah definitely I remember hearing like yeah, we studied together, like with like with my friend in the library until like, you know, midnight, blah, 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 like, like that, I never got work done when I studied, like when I studied with my friends. You just so want to talk. I, I, yeah, I, I just <laughs> talk. Exactly. I distracted people and people distracted me. So <laughs> yeah, I, I started just studying on my own uh, yeah. in my room. Mm. Yeah. Um. So this happened to both of us and we talked so many times about it. 
at one point, or maybe at a lot of different points, we both felt like Bryn Mawr was not for us. When did you feel that way and why? Yeah, I it was freshman year because it was a lot of like, I think I blamed Bryn Mawr for my own mistakes, which, which makes no sense. But I think it would have happened if I went to another school, you know, like it was just, it was about me. It wasn't about Bryn Mawr, but I think I think I just couldn't find a community or like a place, like connection, you know, I had friends, mm. I was part of clubs, but it was like, so what's the point? Like, what is like, what's the purpose of me being here? You know, like, mm. kind of like finding meaning, mm. like, like a greater purpose <laughs> <laughs> for being at Brumart. Like, mm. how am I serving? How am I like, how am I influencing people? Or like, Am I even why am I here? Like, why am I here? Exactly. Like, and how do I find that value? I feel like I needed to feel it was like something, something more like essential. Like it was something else like that was missing. Mm. And I don't, I mean, even now I'm just like, I just don't know what it was. It was, Mm. this is how I like came to life, Bryn Mawr. It was my sophomore year. um, And I was, it was during COVID, the pandemic. And everything was on Zoom, but I was on campus, but all our classes were on Zoom. Um, mm-hmm. And I was taking like, like harder classes compared to my my first year. I was taking organic chemistry. I was very obsessed with getting like really good grades because I, because I knew that like back then I was pre-med and not pre-dental. For both of those schools, you need like really high GPAs. And my freshman year grades weren't that great. So I was like, okay, this, you can't keep doing this you have to get good grades. So sophomore year was when I started studying, studying, studying. And my organic chemistry professor, after my first semester, he asked me like, it was on like, it was on zoom again. Uh, It was his office hours. And I was asking my organic chemistry related questions. And then he was like, Oh, like, are you um, like, are you interested in doing research? Because like, I would love to um, like have you in my lab. And I like, I remember like, being so happy to be part of his research and mostly like someone has hope you know in me Mm. like someone believes that I can do great things Mm. and I that was like that was when my perspective changed because I I think research was just the beginning Mm. of like oh I now I have a purpose you know Mm. I'm doing something like I'm doing Mm. something that's valuable that's important yeah more like more fulfilling something Mm. yeah something fulfilling after that my junior year I was like do I was doing like TA for organic chemistry I mean Mm -hmm. I I love biochemistry like chemistry in biology so much to me anything that's related to like biology and chemistry is like so fulfilling so those those TA like jobs that I had I loved it like Mm -hmm. I love when like students come to my office hours and I can like explain them things and they're like oh okay like you know, like tomorrow on the quiz, if like if Dr. Mal asked this question, I can answer it. Like, mm. I'm like, yes, like, that's what I want. You know, I can like, I'm like doing something good. Mm. Like, like, that's how I'm like serving. Like, mm. I think that was what feel was a me. sense of purpose. Yeah, it's not I'm not just consuming. Mm. I'm also giving back. I think mm. that was that was missing in my first year, which is why I was like, I, I don't like this place because I'm just consuming existing. Like, living like like I needed an outlet to like you know give yeah because I think your own personality and I think there's also a part of culture in there you as a person you want to give to other people you like to care for other people you like to hug people you know you want to make people feel good about themselves you want to make people feel better so that's how you started to like Bryn Mawr you also became a president of our class not I would I wouldn't say shocking but compared to your first year self that was just unexpected how did you decide to run for president <laughs> yeah actually I got nominated again <laughs> you know, I actually love being nominated <laughs> I wonder who like nominated me like who yeah. who thought oh Ebra would be a good class president also we were mm-hmm. like like co-presidents with Reese. Also, it's also, um again, nomination is someone believing in you. Yeah, 
I, I think it's so valuable. Like if, cause I mean, I would have, if it like nominations, like if that wasn't a thing, I don't think I would have ran like, you know, someone else can do that. Or maybe mm-hmm. I would, I'm not sure because in middle school, I remember like we would have class presidents, like only for our, like, um, and I would run for those positions. And I was like, like multiple times I was the president and also like other times like vice president. But when I first came to U.S., I was very passive with those kind of stuff. I couldn't even imagine myself like in high school when I came here, like I was, I had like other priorities, like being the president of like my high school wasn't like, didn't seem like something that I could do. You know, it's like, it was like too, you know, too up there. Like I was mm. trying to like learn English, you know, not yeah. like, <laughs> I, I, I was really happy when I got nominated because also Reese got nominated. So we were like, okay, let's run together. Like, mm. you know, literally just for fun like Mm. if we get elected then obviously we'll do the work but we were like you know like there were other people who were also running and they also have friends so it's really had like I didn't expect anything honestly but we got elected um yeah I I remember being very like happy and it it, I just like I was like wow like Mm -hmm. It was like a reflection moment for me, you know, mm. like when you first came to the US, like you would never, like you would have never imagined like being the president of your like college, like seeing your class. Mm-hmm. But now you are like, that is just like, very crazy. You know, that means, again, that means people believed in us. Like people mm. thought, oh yeah, they would be good president. And I really, really appreciate that. Uh, it's a proud it moment. It Again, it's fulfilling for you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think this is like, the, this is like a different kind of serving. Like it is it is very fulfilling. But at the same time, it is like, it's very fun. TA job, I also liked it. But it, it's you're directly helping people. This is your you're organizing stuff. Uh, it's fulfilling in a different way, like mm. aesthetically pleasing. It's fun. Like mm. You're trying to this time you're trying to make people have fun, not mm. learn stuff. So it's like, Again, like if people are having fun, I'm fulfilled, but it's like, again, a different kind of fulfillment. I yeah. Think. Yeah. So what did you do as president of class of 2023? So t- normally this is what like the um, conferences and events person told us. Mm-hmm. Uh, typically they have like the senior class presidents organize senior week events, uh, which is like the week before graduation where when you have like fun events for the seniors. But on top of that, we wanted to organize another fall senior party. So we organized this party for the senior class. It was actually very successful. Um, We had a theme. It was like a red carpet theme party. It was very tiring, like setting up, cleaning up, like, and Mm. I mean, you. But it was so fun. Nick, Dewey, uh, like you guys all helped us. It was fun. It was, it was great. Mm. And then, so during senior week, senior week planning was very, I don't know, it was very tiring, actually, because it was, it was like whole semester, like second semester, we were like organizing stuff, but we were just not done with like the tickets and like, blah, 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 like like all these like little details, we were still trying to figure, figure those things out, like Mm. while we were taking our final exams, and also like writing our thesis, like it was, it was a lot of work. Mm. And it didn't end there. During senior week, it was, again, a lot of work because we had to check people in, like, to buses, like, and then we had to be there, like, for each, like, even if we didn't want to go to, like, this specific event, we had to go there because we were, like, the chaperone or whatever. (laughs) Um, Yeah, we we had another senior party. Um, Actually, we were, I was a bartender. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> for that senior party so we so didn't the even change we didn't even dress up compromise. I didn't change all my photos like I have my you know just like black leggings black top mm-hmm. and I was like so like tired I didn't even want to be there but mm-hmm. I was like shaking drinks for people and, and in that moment I was like was it worth it that was like the only time I asked myself was it worth it but then later on I was like yeah it, it was worth it when I when, yeah. I, when we gave our like president's speech I was like okay that was actually very cool you know <laughs> it was worth it maybe yeah yeah <laughs> look at least I have one story to tell my kids in the future mm. you know that's the positive side that would be a cool story 
<laughs> um, as president, because I'm sure one of the reasons that you wanted to run for president was also because you wanted um Bryn Mawr, like make Bryn Mawr a better environment for everyone. What impact or what influence did you have on that part of environment or culture or the sense of belonging for people? Honestly, when I was when I accepted like the uh not accept yeah I mean I had to accept the president like position your job description or like position description or whatever is very specific like you mm. just have to organize fun stuff we didn't we really didn't think honestly mm. I'm not even gonna polish like anything we I mean when we were choosing the food mm -hmm. we were trying to choose stuff like um like vegetarian stuff mm. and like vegan stuff mm. and free stuff you know like just to be more inclusive but mm. um like we were just I think that wasn't the reason why we became president, but it just, mm. we're just aware of those things. Mm. And we try to make the best decision for these mm. people. Like during our event, for example, if someone said like, and this is, this is, this is what happened. Someone was like, but these lights are very, um, you know, it could, it can be triggering for some people because like mm. the lights were just moving around like this. And I, the thing is, I just never thought about that. And I like immediately like told the, the DJ and then they like stopped the, those lights for like, they just like oh. were still lights. They weren't moving anymore. Mm. You know? So I think I just try to make myself approachable so that people can tell us like, like tell us, Oh, like, can you like stop the lights? Can you like lower the volume? Like these things, I mean, they're very like little, but I feel like if I didn't, if we didn't make ourselves approachable, people mm. wouldn't be able to tell those things to us and we wouldn't be able to like because we can't be considerate of everyone's situation and like think about those things like consider those things when I'm like when we are planning these events but we tried our best to like make everything inclusive and um mm. and I, like I, we, we really want everyone to have a memorable senior week mm. um and I think we were successful in, mm. in doing that no it was so fun yeah i'm sure it was a success um so then because you mentioned about you know like trying to being considerate of everyone and being inclusive you yourself as a muslim do you think that Bryn Mawr is inclusive enough in different ways and you can be honest too because no yeah, i will be honest yeah <laughs> <laughs> But am I not honest? Yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, Brimmer is great. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, um, my first year, I didn't think Brimmer was like a great environment for Muslim students. Second semester, COVID happened and we were all sent back home. And then during Ramadan, um, like the, the month where we like um, fast and stuff, um, like I was at home. So I didn't really experience Ramadan on campus, which like, I feel like that's when we need like most of like accommodation because we break our fast after sunset, but then the dining halls close before mm -hmm. that. So then that's when we need like accommodation from school, right? Like that's, but I did, just didn't experience Ramadan. So I didn't know. Even from like our MSA, Muslim Student Association, like meetings and stuff, I didn't really click with people in, in that club. I was the only like Turkish person in that club. Even though we're all Muslim, we also have different cultures. And then mm. that can be like a, not, not again, not a barrier, but it's mm. just like, you just get along better with someone who's like from your own culture, you know? Mm. So like you just gravitate towards those people. So I kind of felt I like I couldn't find someone in that community like that I can mm -hmm. connect with. But then um my sophomore year, I was on campus and mm -hmm. it was during the pandemic. We couldn't go off campus and we couldn't even eat inside the dining room, like dining hall. We had mm -hmm. to like eat it in our rooms. Ramadan like was hard, I think, mm -hmm. like that year because like you you just break your fast on your own. The whole point of Ramadan is like you fast and then you get to go with your community your family friends mm. and then you break your fast together but then junior year mm. is was like the best I would say it was the best because they like we have this like new building 
like the wellness center. We just call it the well. And um, they moved like kosher kitchen, halal kitchen to mm-hmm. that building, which mm-hmm. is very, it's in the middle of the um, the campus. Like, it's very accessible because um, back then, the like halal kitchen and kosher kitchen, it was like, I don't even know. It was like mm-hmm. outside of campus. It was it not was so accessible far. at all. Yeah. Like to go there, like you had to like bum, like just get all your stuff. And it was like a hike, mm-hmm. literally a hike. So moving the, the the halal kitchen to the new building was really nice. Also, we got a really good like SGA bu- like budget. Mm-hmm. Every day we had like catering. Like we had sushi one night and then like the next day we had, I don't know, like Egyptian, like, like food, the other, the next day, Lebanese, like it was just a bunch of food. Like it was so mm. good. You know, that's what we needed though. Mm. So we hosted like Villanova, we hosted Swarthmore, Haverford. It was also very nice to see that the Trico like MSC community together. Like it mm. was just very I connected with the people. So junior year is like, I think when they actually started caring, I would say, because we just had more budget, we had more resources, we could Mm -hmm. do more stuff. Um, And also there were more people. I would say they started like, they started accepting more Muslim students. And um, they're just, you know, it, it just makes like, it just feels better when you see a lot more people together. But I, I mean, again, I never, I, I was like a member, but I think I was most active my junior year during Ramadan, but then senior year, I was just too busy. Mm-hmm. So I wasn't like an active, active member, um, mm-hmm. but yeah. Yeah. Wow. That yeah. was a great <laughs> story. Um, what is it like for you being at an, a historically old woman's college? Well, it's, it's a little bit hard to explain you can have it's again it's historically women's college so like I can't say it was all women in my classes um like there are people who don't identify as women but there are Haverford students because they can take classes there are postbacks and I think in general it does feel the opposite of patriarchy Mm -hmm. I maybe I might even say like Barbie land so like, mm. like not not really Barbie land, but mm. I feel like, for example, I study biochemistry and molecular biology, right? For me, like chemistry isn't something that's like, like chemistry is just chemistry. I don't have any associations with it. It might even be a little bit girly to me. I just, there are so many, like all of us, like Reese also is a biochemistry major. Like we just wear like our coat and like do like cute reactions. And then I went to this like ACS, like American Chemical Society meeting where it's like a national conference, right? There were so many white men. I knew this before, but it just never like clicked. I just never felt like it was a male dominated, like, Yo. like it, which is good. I didn't mm-hmm. feel like that. I don't feel inferior to men mm. in chemistry. I don't feel like I'm not good enough or mm. like, I feel very like, oh, I'm, I'm great at this. Yeah, I'm doing my girly chemistry. Like, you know, like maybe it's it's even better than yours. Like, you all look know. the same. Yeah, I look different. I'm doing something different. Yeah, yeah and that's I, a great feeling. It's it's not even like, I'm not even comparing myself. I think that's the, like, that's mm. such a great feeling. Like, I don't feel inferior. I'm I'm not like, you might be better than me because you, or yeah. I, and I think that's, that, that definitely comes from going to a historically women's college because mm-hmm. I know some of my friends like co-ed colleges and they take like chemistry or like intra bio and it's mostly men. And most of the time men dominate these like, you know, like these lectures, conversations, discussions, and mm-hmm. Like, but I never had to experience that, which is like, you know, a blessing. I'm I'm so glad that I didn't have to experience mm. that. Um, I feel the same way. Yeah. I think and the thing is, mm-hmm. I didn't experience that. But at the same time, if that happens, like, because now that I'm like, I graduated, I'm going to go to dental school, or I'm just in like, I'm going to like, start a new job, you know, mm. when that happens, when men dominate the conversation, Mm-hmm. Or they act like they're superior or like, you mm-hmm. know, those that's just like that dynamic. I mm-hmm. can notice that 
and I can speak up for myself. I don't I, like, I don't just accept it. And you're also like that, or like most Brimar yeah. alums are like that. I agree. <laughs> I think that's actually one of the best things that Brimar taught me, knowing that you are, you deserve everything and you can do so many things. There are so many possibilities and there's no reason, there's no logical reason for you to feel inferior. You don't doubt your capability. Just knowing that I feel like gives so much power, like mm-hmm. even in your voice, like when you talk, when you when you talk to these people, I feel like they can sense that you know what you're talking about and they can't, they can't take yeah. advantage of your skin. They can't make you yeah. doubt yourself, kind of. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's a that's, really, that's a really, really good point. point. Yeah. Yeah. So I want to talk more about your experience uh, majoring in biochem because you mentioned it just now. You mentioned that you did pre med in first year and you were planning on doing that. Did you always want to become a doctor? And how did that become dentist? I always liked science um, and I liked helping people, which is like very typical of a pre-med student. Like I feel like if you ask pre-med students, why do you, why are you pre-med? They would literally tell you these two reasons. I like science and I like helping people, Mm -hmm. but I feel like I knew that that wasn't enough to go to medical school. So I was like searching for my why, because I knew that I didn't, I, I knew things that I didn't want to be like, I didn't want to be a professor, even though I like absolutely love like learning. I think I I knew that that wasn't for me. I knew that, I don't know, Mm. English literature wasn't for me. Mm. Uh, I knew things I didn't want, Mm. but I didn't know why I wanted to be a doctor. So Mm. uh, to find my why, I did this internship um, in Rwanda I shadowed uh, physicians from different specialties, but I ended up not liking it. I felt like it wasn't fulfilling. I wouldn't be happy doing that job for the rest of my life. There were also dentists in that clinic. So I shadowed the dentist as well, which to me was very surprising because I have four dentists in my family. There are four dentists. And I just never thought about being a dentist before. You know, I, I didn't want to be the fifth one. To, like, I want to be unique, <laughs> right? <laughs> so um, I'll shadow, but I don't think I'll be a dentist. And here I am. I, I apply to dentists, the like dentist dental school. in the family. Um, yeah, exactly. It was like the perfect job for me. Like, I was like, it just clicked in my head. Aesthetically, it is very like, you know, it has to look nice because like your mouth is it's on your face. People see your mouth. So <laughs> I want it to look nice, you know. <laughs> and you want but people also, to look nice as well. Yeah. Functionally too. Like it's when you're eating, like you you should be able to like chew. Like it can cause a lot of problems if you don't have teeth or if it's also functionally very important. And then you work with your hands. Mm. So you're actually doing stuff instead of asking questions. Because when I was shadowing the practitioners, he would like ask like, oh, is it like your right ear? Like, is it hurting like this? I don't like one to 10. How sharp is the pain? Like, it's a very verbal. Like, mm. I didn't like that aspect of medicine. I think being mm. a surgeon, I'm sure it would be fun because you're working with your hands. Mm. But I just didn't shadow a surgeon. And I already decided to do dentistry, you know, mm. but I'm considering being a dental surgeon. So maybe I'll do that. Yeah. So like doing like using your hands and also seeing like results in short amount of time. Like, I think it was very fulfilling, like satisfying. The person who comes in, this tooth hurting, blah, 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 either extract a tooth or like do a root canal. 30 minutes later, they're happy. And mm. they're happy. You're happy. Mm. You know? just perfect. So I was like, okay, this is what I mean, it took a lot of time to like, I I had to like reflect on like how I was feeling and like what Mm -hmm. I really liked about it. Because I was like, I like it. But I like, should I really change my mind about like going to medical school? I don't Mm -hmm. like changing my plans. But I really felt like this was the right calling. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you just mentioned that you interned in Rwanda. And you have told me stories of how you did these internships and shadowing. I just admire you because you just go out of your way to find all these opportunities by yourself. It's kind of like 
unconventional as well, right? Like you would see people working or interning at dental places or applying on LinkedIn or things like that. You also shadow a dentist in Bryn Mawr in your senior year. And I remember this one day when you came back and then you were like, because I think you go there every week, right? And yeah. then you you texted me and you were like, wow, like this dentist was doing this and that. And you were impressed with the connection. Can you talk more about that? Yeah. So at first, thank you for, for appreciating <laughs> unconventional ways. <laughs> but I would say that actually, it does seem like cooler maybe than like, you know, I could have shadowed a dentist in US. Like, why did I do that? Like, not to be cool. Because that was like the only connection. So I used the connection that I had to find that position. And yeah, I didn't have connections in the US to, to shadow a dentist. So you go all the way to Rwanda. It would have been, yeah, but I found, yeah, my, my connections connected to me, Rwanda. Yeah. Mm. So that, yeah, that was the reason why I went there. Yeah, going back to the like the question that you asked, when I shot when I started shadowing the dentist at Brit Mar, he owned a family practice. So his dad, his grandfather, they were all dentists. And he knew all of his patients, like personal lives. Everyone who came to the clinic was his friend. He would ask about, like, oh, how is Dylan doing? Dylan is like the son. And I'm always like, who's Dylan? Like, why is he asking about Dylan? Like, I was very impressed by how connected he was to his patients and how much he actually cared. I feel like that, and I I saw that it was making him happy. It made the job fulfilling Mm -hmm. for him, I think. And I feel the same way. Mm -hmm. I feel like I don't feel fulfilled when I don't have a connection with people that I'm working with. And I want to know, I want to be able to help But I also want to be friends, you know, like when I heard you talk about it, I was like, wow, then I think this is definitely for you. Because if you are a doctor or in other fields of uh, medicine, you treat patients as numbers and cases. But I don't think you with your personality, you can do that. You want to talk to people. So you have to do something where you can have that human interaction. Yeah. One other reason why I didn't, why I didn't want to like go to medical school and become a doctor was I felt like I never got to talk to my doctor for like a long time, like longer than 15 mm-hmm. minutes, maybe. Mm-hmm. Like it was all always like the for the first nurse comes in, does like stuff, leaves. And then the doctor comes in, does stuff and then leaves. Like it was never like a connection. I, I just never had a connection with my doctor or I never talked to someone who had a connection with their doctor. So I, I'm sure some people do. Mm-hmm. That was just not my experience. And because you you wouldn't want to develop a connection with a doctor like you don't want you don't really want to see a doctor a second or third time or too much time right but yeah that's a really good point to dentists too though like Mm. I I don't think people would want to go people are actually Mm. really scared to go to the dentist for some reason um (laughs) so like I don't think they would want to come Mm. but Mm. like I wouldn't want my patients to be scared like I want them to feel comfortable and I feel like when I go to the doctor for example I I don't like going to the doctor I like I totally get why people would feel the same way about a dentist but I feel like if your doctor or dentist is someone that's approachable and like you can Mm. feel that they actually care about you the way they talk to you the treatment plans that they offer you I feel like you will actually trust your doctor or dentist and you will feel more comfortable. I think that discomfort comes mm-hmm. from not being able to trust because mm-hmm. you know that it is a capitalist country and people are trying to make money. Mm-hmm. There is this thing called insurance. They don't want to like, you know, refer to you this doctor for no reason. Mm-hmm. You really need to be dying to see the doctor. If you have like, if your pain is like on a scale of one to 10, if it's below five, oh, you can just wait a little bit. Like, mm. it's fine. You you won't die. My experience plus my family's experience in the U.S. with, like, this healthcare system didn't seem like something that I want to be part of because I have no control over how I can practice, what kind of doctor I can be, because I need to follow these rules. As a dentist, I have control over how I practice. I don't have to treat people as, like, numbers. I don't see them as like a money sign, you know, like every patient, oh, okay, great. Like I'm getting more patients. 
that's not the point. Like that, that is not the point, you know? Mm. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> well, I wish I meet more dentists and doctors <laughs> like you, because now that I'm starting this adulting journey, I have not had the luck of meeting really empathetic doctors like that. Let's go back a little bit to talk about the biochem uh, major or program at Bryn Mawr. Uh, in your opinion, what are the pros and cons? I think there are a lot of pros. Great professors, absolutely great professors. They're very passionate about what they're teaching. They want you to learn. They're not trying to fail you. They And if you want to learn, they will literally offer you all the resources that they have. Obviously, they won't give you the, the, the answers to like the exam questions, but they will guide you. They will go over stuff over and over again with you, mm -hmm. um, which to me, like I see all of my professors like as like role models. They actually care. They literally want all of us to succeed in life, to learn and to be excited about learning, which is like amazing. But they also care about us, like their students, personally. I graduated, right, like three months ago. And then um, I was still in Pennsylvania. And then um, Dr. Mel, who's an organic chemistry professor, he invited his own lab group to his house. He also like invited me, another student who also mm -hmm. graduated, a couple more students who gradu gra graduated like a few years ago mm -hmm. to his house. Mm -hmm. Like he like made like... Um, barbecue chicken and also like tofu wow. salad and you know it was just very like very sweet like mm. he, he just values the connection yeah which I mm. think is so like I, like I can just feel that with like him but also with other professors like they mm. actually value the connection that they have with students I wouldn't I don't have any cons honestly <laughs> it's a great yeah it's a great and major and you actually don't get that at a bigger university. And I think it, it that's, it's understandable why you don't have any cons because the biochem major is pretty strong at Bryn Mawr, that even the post back program at Bryn Mawr is one of the top programs, right? Yeah, I feel like there, and there's a reason why the post back program is one of the top, like in the U.S. At Bryn Mawr, the class size are very small compared to a like bigger university where you take, you know, intro classes with like a hundred, at least a hundred more students. Here, like classes were, intro classes were like 40, 60, I would say 60. Mm. Um, but then as you like, you know, take like more advanced level classes, the numbers go really low mm. one of my classes yeah. was probably like 12 mm. advanced biochemistry class was like 12 I think yeah mm. yeah so that's all the questions I have for biochem but there's one more thing that we did not touch on and I really want to go a little bit deeper into it which is making friends and friendship at Bryn Mawr. what did you learn about friendship throughout your time here that is a hard question. I think I'm still learning about friendship. <laughs> there were so many ups and downs, I would say. When I first started college, my idea was to, oh, like make a bunch of friends, talk to everyone. And I, I, the thing is, I do like talking to people. I like making a lot of friends. When I was growing up, I always had a couple of best friends, little, small, very close friend group. I was more intent. I was always very intentional with who I was friends with. Mm. Um, but then first year, that's, that's how I was like thinking about it. And then I like noticed that, okay, that's not for me. You know, you should be friends with people who actually care about you, mm. who make you feel like you are valued, like you are valuable. And I remember, I think sophomore year, like my only close friend was like probably Yen. I wasn't like, I didn't. AKA I, me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just like, to clarify. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. From, I mean, yeah, I should have said you. I, I, I'm talking as if I'm like talking to someone <laughs> else, but um, like I, I'm talking about like Bryn Mawr only. Like I had other friends like back home, like here, but from Bryn Mawr, I, my only close friend was you. And, and then like junior year I started being friends with Yui and Reese and then junior year Judy like we became like a like a friend group and I think there are like pros and cons of having a lot of friends you have more stuff to do you know like if it's only Yen and I 
I think we would be okay just like going to Starbucks all the time and like <laughs> or just walking around like you, you get more like ideas and it's just more fun when there are more people but again mm -hmm. everything brings something different to the friend group mm -hmm. um I think I think this is what you told me before there are different friends for different things or mm. something like that I can't remember yeah. which I agree with but even then I feel like like there there's certain there are certain things that I'm like looking for in a friend I want to be able to talk I want to be able to have a conversation like yeah. a like, good one not mm. just like talk about like, not like gossip mm. about other people or like talk I agree about, bad like negative energy mm. and I don't like mm. having people around me who have negative energy because that makes me feel negative too feeling hopeless feeling down like mm. obviously if I have negative feelings or negative thoughts I know that you would be there for me and same thing for you if you're feeling down like I, I feel like you would also feel comfortable sharing that with me. I'm not saying like you can't complain to me like yeah. we're not friends, but it's like we complain all the time. We complain all the time, but we reflect on that. We try to help each other. You know, it's mm. not like we just make each other feel even worse about yeah. ourselves. Yeah. We try to solve it we, or, mm. or just listen, just be there for each other. Yeah. And I think what's very important in that it's, I think what you were trying to say is what kind of person does this specific friend bring out of me? I just have so many feelings and so many parts of me. Does this friend bring out the negative version of me? Does this friend bring out like the better parts of me that I want to keep and strive to be that person? You, yeah, you just explained it so well. I just, <laughs> I just love the way you explained it. That's what it. I'm here for. <laughs> no, that was just such a great, like, way to explain it. Like, it just clicked in my head. I'm like, it's like a light bulb. Like, <laughs> you know, like, yeah. that was so true. Because I feel like I'm a, I don't want to say that, but I'm a different person when I'm with you versus when mm -hmm. I'm with, like, my Boston friend. Like, you know, like. Or, different or, friends like, bring out different things in you. Yeah. And yeah. if it's all good things, then those are the friends that you should really keep close right yeah yeah, that, yeah. Is, that is such a good way to put it yes yeah I think everyone all of us are still learning about friendship in different stages of life even if you're 50 or 60 you're still learning about friendship and relationships yeah. right now I'm applying that to people that I'm meeting like it's not just to become friends but acquaintances as well that's a new adulting word <laughs> that I have to like apply in my life right now yeah. <laughs> yeah so one last question for people trying to find their place at Bryn Mawr what would be your advice mm. that is a really good question or or just trying to find their place in their own university or college um I would say first, don't be afraid to be by yourself. Don't be afraid to listen to your thoughts. You know, just going through those emotions and feelings, it is hard because then once you acknowledge those thoughts and feelings, you have to take action. And like, which is why mm -hmm. people often don't acknowledge their feelings and thoughts. Once you say, okay, you know what? I am, I shouldn't be doing this or I am not feeling okay, not taking action you're staying in that state of not feeling okay. You're, mm. This time, it's a choice. You're choosing to not be okay because you already acknowledge that feeling. And then surround yourself with people who can actually help you fix those things or feel better or do better, like help you achieve your goals. Because as much as it is like you are doing this, it also... It depends on who you're surrounded with. Like, mm. like if if you're trying to be more positive, surround yourself with more positive people. I think you'll start to feel like you belong. Mm. The thing that I explained, I feel like it's mostly like about your inner, like it, it's like inner work. But I feel like once you're once you're connected to yourself, your mm. own thoughts and feelings, you feel more present in wherever you are and that actually reflects in your work in like the spaces that you're in like you like good things will find you once you're you once you feel more connected to yourself I feel like good opportunities will come you'll do amazing stuff good and, and, will come yeah be patient 
it's going to go by so fast and you're going to change a lot. Change isn't bad, Mm. but change isn't always good. It, It depends, but it's okay to change. And then once you, it's, once you change, it's okay to change that change again. Mm. You know, it's, it's a constant change. Don't be afraid to, to change the way you think. Be open to hear other people's perspectives and just learn. Just learn as much as you can. Mm. It, it doesn't, you don't have to change your mind either. Just mm. take that information in and just keep it in there. Like you don't have to do Maybe anything. Maybe like later on you will need it. Yeah, exactly. Maybe later yeah. on you need it, or it's just like a fun fact that you will, you just, you'll just have have like in your yeah. head. It's like as a Vietnamese coming from Vietnam, I didn't see a lot of Muslims. And then before coming to college, my mom was like, "Oh, she's Muslim. Like, how how are you going to live with her?" Because she thought that it would be hard for us to live together. But then I went through the first year with you, and it was not like that at all. Even when we eat together, for example, now. I know the things that you don't eat and then the things that you eat. And then I'm more mindful of that. Yeah. I can eat whatever I want and we will get something we can both eat together and share. I myself also learn a lot. And I think that's such a great advice. And I think I can apply it for me in my current situation right now. So that's all the questions I have for you today. Thank you so much for your time. I really enjoy listening to you talk about the stories even though this is probably the end time you told me thank you so much oh well, thank you so much for inviting me it was i mean i i, I wish my computer just didn't die <laughs> and i didn't have to like hold my phone like this but yeah it, it was actually really fun like thinking about these things because mm-hmm. i added more stuff to my explanations because over time they kind of when i think about stuff mm-hmm. change <laughs> yeah i'm so happy okay <laughs> thank you. of course